I'm Joe Kane. I'm Dan Kane. I'm Sal Conca. And this is the Imperfect Podcast. To the bumper. Movie News. This week and every week, we'll be bringing you trending news in movies, film, and media. This week, Movies.com had available the first Ghostbusters clip, if anybody really cares about that reboot. The Verge reported that Netflix signed a deal to exclusively stream CW shows eight days after their finale, which is pretty big. Include shows like The Flash, Supergirl, and Vampire Diaries, so our Marvel and superhero fans will be pretty happy. Bloody and Disgusting reported that they had behind-the-scenes clip shows on the new Alien Hand from Alien Covenant. So good news for Captain America fans here in New York. Hollywood Reporter says we'll be getting our own Captain America statue here. Dedication ceremony is going to take place on August 10th in Prospect Park. This week, Long Island International Film Expo's annual film festival comes to Belmore, New York, July 13th. Our short film, Twisted, will be shown Thursday the 14th at 3 p.m. Twisted is a short film featuring Colin that wakes up in a chair in a madman's basement. Catch the trailer on hecklocane.com and be sure to check out longislandfilmexpo.com for all the details. Awards will be given out July 21st. So for more news like this, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Heckler Kane Inc. Special guest. And we're back. We have our special guest with us, Brett Shulman. Sal, you want to take over here? You betcha. So um, as indie filmmakers, we like to support the arts, and that means supporting indie music. And one of our good friends, Brett Shulman, is here with us. He had a, uh, he, he's a songwriter, and he wanted a video made for one of his songs called Love Wins. So um, Brett, why don't you tell us a little about how long you've been playing music and a little about your, bit about your playing background. Um, I've been playing music since I was six, um, got a guitar when I was six, and just been playing since uh back in the early 90s before probably half of the people listening to this were born Mm -hmm. i met a guy his name is louie and we were in a band together we wrote some songs and um and then we you know lost track and now we're back writing together and um we're doing um we're trying to make a go of it as a songwriting team you guys you guys created a little bit of a company too right it's a well, yeah, no, I mean it's a it's a like a songwriting team, not really no, not a company just yet. Well, I, <laughs> I was, <laughs> it's not I, so formal. Joe. I was I was prying you for the name of the company actually. Mm-hmm. So you want to give the name of the, the name of the name of the songwriting, songwriting partnership, partnership. Is Candy Max Music. There you go. There you go. Candy Max Music, named after Louis Max, my partner, and myself. Candy Man. Uh, uh, Candy won't, Man. <laughs> won't believe that that was my nickname back Joe, in the day. Joe, okay, you're going to have to elaborate on that story a little bit. <laughs> can we edit in a picture of Louie, like, next, like, hovering yeah, over we'll, Brett's we'll put, shoulder we'll the Louis, entire time? I'd you like just got to send me a picture, and I'll get Louie just sitting right next to you silently. <laughs> I tried talking Louie into coming in here tonight. But oh, would have been great. He's in Queens. He's, he's got personality. Yeah. He would have been. I'm yeah, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> he does, actually. He's, he was the interesting one of the he, duo. He is. He is. I'm not. I am not the right guy for this. So is, this. is it fair to say? So who's the brains of the operation? Then? Totally. Do you guys, how do you guys share the writing partnership? Like, yeah. do you guys have roles? So it, well, speak? he's definitely the brains of the partnership. Okay. Um, he's the business end of the partnership. He's the he's the um, gift of gab end of the partnership. But he's also the guy who sparked this. Um, we we write to, uh, separately and together. Okay. He comes up with parts and songs and and um, words and, and stuff, and then bounces it off of me, and I take it up a notch, or the vice versa, or I, I ruin it. However, you want to look oh, at one it, one or the other. Sure. <clears throat> and um, some and uh, I hadn't really been actively writing, and then since he stimulated those, those juices flowing again, now I'm starting to write and bring to him. And then we write together, and it's actually been pretty fun. It's cool how that yeah. pro- creative process works. I think it's the same for us with doing the podcast and filmmaking. I mean, the more yeah. you do it, the more it yeah. starts to yeah. flow. Yeah. Right? I, I mean, didn't even know I still had music in me sort of to come out. I had well, no cool. idea. 
Yeah. That's cool. Well, I did. I, I honestly, uh, we're all musicians here on this podcast. I mean, everybody mm-hmm. who who's listened to us before knows that we we are all musicians. Um, I, I had my creative um, outlet of doing original music for a long time, but you know, it just kind of ended for me, and I was like, all right, I'm I'm I put that beside. Um, now, this is something that you said you used to do the um, writing with Louis in particular, Louis Max, <laughs> Louis Max, <laughs> Louis Max. Shout out to Louis Max. That's horrible. Um, we d- used to do the writing with him now, and now you've gotten back together with him. Um, there, there was also, uh, in a conversation we had separate of the, this podcast, you had talked about there's a third member of your team uh, that works with you. So Louis has a friend, an, an old acquaintance musician guy who lives actually down in Nashville. Nashville, okay. And he is a studio guy, um, producer guy. Um, I think he's also a live musician. Who um, Lou, I got Lou and I got together, started writing music. You know, it was just two guys with you know my my acoustic guitar. Louis plays piano, and you know we'd record our songs on our iPhones, and yeah. it was like, yeah, I guess yeah, these are pretty good, but. What are we going to do with these? And Back in the 90s, you guys had iPhones? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you didn't? Holy cow. The iPhone point zero. <laughs> I'm talking about now. I got, yeah. I got you. Um, and so, he, so we had no real focus of where this was going. We were just having some fun. You know, getting back together with old friends and, you know, having some fun together. And then he, I guess, he reached out to... I had no idea this was happening. He reached out to this old friend. His name is uh, Greg. And he told him, hey, uh, you know, I'm writing some songs. I know you're a producer and an engineer. And, uh, and um, you know, he's a very proficient piano and keyboard player. And he sent them down our, like, live acoustic, you know, room recording of a, of a song. Um, he just tracked it. He programmed drums and played. Uh, your, your songs. He, well, the, the first one, yeah. He, I, I had no idea this was happening. And he tracked the, um, you know, he orchestrated it and, and arranged it and, and hired a vocalist and a guitar player and played all the keys and the bass and everything and sent us back a fully mixed version of the Basically song. Basically a fully produced. Fully produced. Right? Like song that to me sounded like really could be on radio. So we we uh, arrived at an arrangement with him that we would work together with him and produce these songs, and he, you know, we send him our very 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 rough raw versions, yeah. yep. live performances of our songs, and he tracks them, and we work with him virtually. So, hey, I'm you know like what are you hearing for this track, and you know give me a feel and a beat and a vibe, and you know and what do you think of this, and he'll send us a track, and we no 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 a little slower, a little faster, a little this or a little that, sure. back and forth. So how many songs have you guys completed? I think we're so up far. to like eight maybe, and we're on our ninth. Cool. We're, and we're obviously keep... it's a, this part time gig for you, right? I mean this totally is not you're, not, you're yeah. not making a living as a musician, so this not is... at all. And so what is your day gig? I mm. am an acupuncture. There you go. Cool. <laughs> cool. Good deal. Um, so what type of music do you guys write? What, what kind of stuff are you guys doing? It's, it's interesting. It's, uh, pop country. Pop country. There's the something. Which is, yeah, which is, it's interesting because when Lou called me up and said, hey, you know, I'm writing some songs and, and I'm thinking most of them are coming out in this vein of pop country. I went, oh, prank caller. And I, you know, hung up the phone. I'm "I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of country. Like I never have been. You're not allowed to say that anymore. (laughs) Yeah. I had never been a fan of country music. It just kind of turned me off. Yeah. Um, But I, same here, but I, um, that sort of seems to be where pop, pop music has gone. Yeah. Is, is as, as of recently, it's become more, uh, well, there was a long time where like, uh, we're from New York and in New York, it was like socially unacceptable if you said I liked country music. But if you go in like the other fifty states, they're like, oh, okay, country music is is cool. Yeah, right. Um, so now it's become more of a mainstream type of thing. It's where... Totally mainstream. And I've always been a fan of pop music, mm-hmm. pop metal, pop rock, pop. You know, but like I've always had a very keen ear for pop music. So 
So what um, kind of, so yeah, so what artists inspire you in general? Like what, what types of artists? I mean, obviously not maybe necessarily you didn't grow up on country. So no, what, what no. artists do you look to I, for inspiration? I mean, the Beatles are a big influence for me and, the, and Queen and Cheap Trick and, you know, su- super heavy pop rock bands, but like with a very strong pop I, element. I, iconic rock bands. Yeah, but also, you know, I like random obscure bands too, but like there's always I like very few very few bands or artists that are that don't have a pop element to them. Even Green Day, mm-hmm. very poppy, very commercial, very cor- you know, chorus oriented. So Cool. Cool. Um and that's basically how it, I, I sort of happened into country music by accident. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um so yeah, so on the on the video side of things, I mean, it basically you asked us heckler kane creations and said we want to do a video for love wins and basically gave us carte blanche so but there was a reason you wanted a video i mean was there some significance or importance to it's really wanting a yeah video? yeah it was um th- it was promotional mm-hmm. so that there could be something you know trying to build i guess a web presence for candy max music so that there would be more than just a soundcloud page mm-hmm. to go and listen to maybe something to look at Cool. As well. So, I mean, so there's, you know, the song title is Love Wins, which kind of a little self-explanatory. It's obviously, uh, we see Love Wins. Tragic love story. Yeah. (laughs) And and, and we see Love Wins, uh, you know, all over social media as a a hashtag or anything. I mean, Love Wins is kind of like a big... Yeah. byline these days so in in that sense do you think the video matched the story of what you guys were trying yeah to tell i mean the it, song? it very closely yeah it, it told the story i mean it the, the, basically the song and actually yeah, it, give us it, the story it's a good thing louis i mean it's not a good thing louis not here it's not a good thing that louis isn't here because wow, i he, hope louis doesn't <laughs> listen to this <laughs> <laughs> i hate that guy <laughs> man uh, uh he wrote the lyrics, basically. I, you know, I tweaked them here and there, but he wrote this song. Yeah, like, the lyrics came sort of to me. Yep. Um, and it's basically, you know, if you listen to the lyrics, it's basically, you know... Um, what I take from it is it's a failed relationship from the past. Mm-hmm. We've now separated. I live up here. You live down there. But we're both thinking of each other. Like, could we make it work? And I'm going to come down come down and get you, grab you. You're going to come up with me. We're going to give it a one good shot. And, you know, we're going to prove everybody wrong. And, you know, we're going to make it work this time. That's basically... And, yeah, it's basi- it, it sort of... Uh, Joe's idea of um, having the two main characters kind of start in two different places and then meet at the at the end of the video kind of made sense yeah, yeah so i mean you executive produced the entire video joe so why don't you talk a little bit about yeah well basically how, you know how, how the process went for you i the, the the first part of the process was i got the call from uh brett uh that he was interested in me working on the video and doing the video and I said, well, we got to come up with something that's that represents the song. And I, th- I think the first thing um, there was a line about Christmas and like Santa Claus in in the song. And there the first, is? the first, the only direction that you, <laughs> the only direction that you gave me was like, don't be so literal and like you know show Christmas. And yeah, then like, right. I didn't want every line to be matched. And yeah, don't put a Christmas tree here. Don't, and, yeah, don't yeah. don't match every. That was the only bit of direction I got from Brett. Uh, and, and um, otherwise, he said, you know, carte blanche, go do do what you got to do um, and make me a video that represents this song. Um, so I, I basically came up with the, the concept that there were two people walking and uh, meeting together for a date that they had um, background wise in my mind. The, the, the background that these two had was that they were previously together and they were no longer together. And that that represents what the song was saying to me. Um, and now that they're coming back together to, to basically try it again. Uh, so that was my... Where'd you, how did you come up with that? That's I, crazy. I listened to the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, it's not a mystery. It's so not a mystery. Right. It's not a mystery. Um, but but that's, that's good song, songwriting right there. Is when you look at something and go, okay, it's, it's not a mystery. It's not right. like, oh, oh my God, what is this? So I took that concept that you had uh, for the video. And my initial concept that it, it was going to be one long shoot um and side by side cameras um going you know walking and they would end up in the uh same place at the same time and that you would be with each character in each side 
um, until they met. In real time, you were saying. In real yeah, time. Yeah. In real time. Thank you. Thank you for explaining. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> no, I, we're all here to help each other I'm out. The, I'm the video guy, you know? <laughs> we're all here to help. Um, you know, unfortunately, what happened was that turns out to be very boring walking from point A to point B. Right. Um, but not unfortunately, we were able to come up with a storyline where it flashed back to different times in their lives where they were together. Um, so we, we recorded after, after realizing that, you know, just having two people walking was not enough. You know, we had, we had a whole bunch of like circus acts basically lined up. And what happened was you want to, why don't you elaborate on what happened, uh, with the original shoot? Well, with the original shoot, I, I know I was, I was there as, cause Joe had to walk backwards for some of the shoot with the, ca- I, I was, I was filming. I was physically filming with the camera. So. Yeah. And, uh. He decided he was going to walk backwards down a subway staircase, which is like three times the length of a regular one. So I stood there basically holding him up backwards down the steps. Did you get a good good grab? I did. I got a few. (laughs) Um, He basically carried me down the stairs backwards. Carried him down, except one, one shot, I fell because I started laughing. And all my strength was gone, and we went down like three or four steps. Oh but God. well, the funny thing was, obviously, I fell with him. <laughs> the take that's in the in the shot of um, uh, Noah, our actor, yeah. uh, Noah Santoro is his name. He was he's a great actor who came in and pitched in and and uh, worked with us on this on this story. He um, he's walking down the stairs, and I'm walking down backwards, holding the camera, and you were my guide. You fell, so then I subsequently fell. Going down the stairs, going backwards, and that's actually the take we take right up to the point where I fell. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that I, I don't mean to interrupt the falling, but I think that you told me that um, every take you had to do, <coughs> your actor had to go to like the 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 train stop, yeah, east of you or something, and get on the get train on the again train and, and, and try come back, again. <laughs> and everything was timed out by the, like the, the train schedule. Which when you told me that was we were, <laughs> really insane. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were we were taking a very long time to wait for the train to come. Yeah. And uh it was all about timing Patience. on the trains. Patience, Patience. for all. Yeah. Joe art. loves using the train station to shoot. We've shot yeah. how many movies like um, involve the train station? I want to say offhand, uh I have a good 7 or 8 uh movies that I've shot or, or short films or or something whatever I've shot at that train station. I know the last one we just showed you that short yeah. And that was at the mm-hmm. train station as well. So same thing. I We have the, the railroad app trying to... Oh, yep. Arrives at 6.52. <laughs> you better be ready to get Dude, that I hope shot. Dude, I hope you have a monthly ticket. I, <laughs> <laughs> Do you? I don't. Because uh, if you're paying actually, for a ride, it's um, You know, it's funny. I did, I did a commercial a uh, couple years back, and uh, it was actually for Brett's wife. Um, uh, it's called The Nose Pickers. That's and true. Uh, for a book she wrote. And um, William the, Blanche books. Yeah, oh. and it was actually shot at that scene. <laughs> plug, plug. <laughs> Look, say it again Look, so we have it. <laughs> LillianBlancheBooks.com. It, Lillian Blanche books. There you go. Um, the uh, the the commercial for that book was actually shot at that same train station. <laughs> go surprise, ahead, surprise, and surprise. surprise. Well, you it. <laughs> um, the uh, the best part about that is is nobody even nobody even bothers to look at us when we we film at this train station. Uh, to be honest, we've never gotten a permit to, to film there. We've never gotten any sort of permission. Uh, we just go and we film at this place, and and they're great about it. Nobody yeah. even looks at you. They're like, okay, he, you're walking through. Did he just confess to a crime? Yeah, no, I, I, I kind okay, of just right. confessed to the crime. I don't think it's on a Periscope. Crime. This is called, <laughs> no, we're not on uh, Periscope. No, this is called we're on YouTube, Gorilla <laughs> or, or okay. iTunes. Yeah. Guerrilla filmmaking. Yeah, that's that's what it boils it, down know. to. Yeah, but they really don't pay attention. The funny thing about that day is there was snow on the ground. There was well, snow on the ground. And so I had to avoid... I was directing him backwards by the shirt, and I had to avoid ice. He hit... That wasn't my fault, but in the he hit a patch of ice and went down. Wasn't the original shoot canceled because, because we had blizzard? The, yeah. We had the blizzard. Yep. It was a blizzard. Because you were going to come. I was going to come. I was going to go. Yep. And we, none of us, a lot of us didn't make it because we had was the blizzard. This, and then was it, was it rescheduled for like Super Bowl Sunday or something? <laughs> yeah, that was yes. it. <laughs> That's exactly when we shot. Which makes a whole lot of sense. And that would be why Sal didn't show up. <laughs> yeah, well, I cut my finger that day, see? So, you know. He actually, I, I like, you actually have a scar I from have that scar. cut, so that's legit. 
Yeah, I sliced my finger off. Remember yeah. that, yeah. That was, that was a good cut. That was a good cut. That was a good chop. <laughs> yeah. Sharpen your knives, kids. <laughs> but <laughs> back on schedule. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the first, the first, uh, the shoot was originally scheduled for uh, about a month before, and we got snowed out by the blizzard of 2016, the biggest blizzard they had in January 2016. And it was, um, and we had to, we had to reschedule and we, we lost people. Like, uh, like I said, there were a lot of like circus acts that were supposed to come in and we lost a bunch of the circus acts. There were going to be contortionists and flamethrowers. And basically what we did is we made a short film Mm -hmm. and we weren't looking at it as going, oh, this is a music video. We were going, we have to tell the story just timed. Cause it, you know, it's interesting cause it's not music videos usually feature someone playing an instrument or singing the words you yeah. usually will have that video so and and in this case there that doesn't exist because there isn't an artist here yep. so yeah it's basically it's kind of so not a music video it's so, more like so what you did is you scored our um our short film <laughs> we scored your short film see now you're, you're, you're welcome. We, just, we just did it backwards <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> It's a good way to do it. I mean, that's what inspiration comes from anywhere, you know. You for for film writing, for music writing, it's good. Stuff. What what yeah. are you doing next? Because then we'll you'll inspire our next song. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to let you know. We're thinking we are- about running a, an indie indie music uh, music video contest. Actually. Well, it would have to be indie five hundred because it's country. We only do country. Mm-hmm. So okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you'd qualify. This one's gonna be rock. All right. yeah. <laughs> Where can everybody go hear your lovely? Country pop. They tell music. me that the kids tell me that there's this thing called the internet, and you can go there on your computers and your and your PCs or things. And uh, ca- uh, uh, SoundCloud is apparently the there website. We go. SoundCloud. Yeah. SoundCloud. And, and then how Candy fun- Max Music. Candy Max Music. Capital all, M. All one word. It's all one word. It's stylized as Candy Max with capital M. We couldn't decide if it was Max Candy or Candy Max, but I'm Candy, so I win, and it's first. And fuck you, Lou Max. Brett wins. Curse? You can. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're completely What's how, how did we? How did we get? How did we get the the company? Was uh, Heckler Kane? That's the other thing. So. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So yeah, I lost, you lost that, that one. Battle. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, you can check out Brett's music on uh, SoundCloud, like he said, at Candy Max Music on SoundCloud. The video you can check out at our YouTube channel. Um, YouTube. Also on our website. Yep, website, YouTube, all that good stuff at uh, hecklercane.com. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, thank you for being our guest here. Thank you for having me. Thanks for, uh, for the video. All right. We'll be back. Mainstream Indie Film. Here's a bunch of indie films that went mainstream. And all these films are available on Netflix. Yeah, so we have a ton of films on Netflix that were independent films and uh, like Goodwill Hunting, Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction. I mean, the last two are just Quentin Tarantino alone. I think, you know, he's a guy that spearheaded indie filmmaking. Yeah, he's somebody that we think of as a mainstream filmmaker who has, uh, who really has broken into the mainstream, but he's a independent filmmaker as, uh, by nature. And yep. even the things he does today are maybe backed by some of these companies, but his, his nature and his approach to his filmmaking is independent style. Yeah. Yep. I mean, even at the top of the list, we got Goodwill Hunting with Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, right? The most famous, one of the most famous film writing duos uh, to grace the silver screen. They won Academy Award on Goodwill Hunting as film writers, yep. as, as uh, screenwriters, I'm sorry, as screenwriters for an independent film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and a, now we got Jason Bourne and what? What superheroes is and, and Batman. Batman? Right, we we <laughs> got Batman Jason, and Bourne. <laughs> Goodwill Hunting became uh, Jason Bourne and Batman. So you know, there's always hope out there for all of us. Um, yeah. You know, other films on that you can catch on Netflix that were once independent that are independent films. Usual Suspects, Silver Linings Playbook, one of my personal favorites. More recent, right? I mean, yeah. you got Bradley Cooper in there. Um, Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro. <laughs> I mean. It's great to see mainstream actors supporting indie film. You know, you have actors out there that are willing to take the risk and do indie films um, with low budget just to uh, kind of stretch their acting chops and not do something so mainstream. Well, let, let's let's clarify here. Uh, what makes an indie film an indie film as opposed to a uh, mainstream film that we normally think of as a mainstream film? Mm-hmm. Uh, let me pose that question to you guys. What What's the difference between an indie film and a uh, a big budget film? Mumbles. There's, there's no, 
there's no major studio behind it. Yeah. That's that's the big difference between an indie film. Uh, you can have money behind it. Mm-hmm. You you can have money that's out there for an indie film to be made. Right. However, you don't have the company backing it. Right. Um yeah. A lot of these films had budgets, right? Yeah, Let's not absolutely. lie. Absolutely. Right. The, just because they were independent films, they had budgets behind them. Brad, for sure. Bradley Cooper and, and um, Robert De Niro did not work for free. Exactly. They, they got paid. Exactly. There's no two ways about it. And, and, you know, it's possible for indie filmmakers, you know, you can either go out and find investors or you could do something like a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo or, or Kickstarter or GoFundMe. You know, so there's lots of opportunities to get funding. You know, and you don't need a major film studio to back you. And this seems to be the new wave of things that's going on, going mm-hmm. out and getting crowdfunding, going out and doing that. I, I mean, just looking down the list a little bit, you got Clarks on there, which was, which yeah. was. Well, that's the indie film of all indie films. That is for the a lot of... indie film. Yeah. Um, but uh, speaking of an indie film, people don't think of it as an indie film. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was all, it's Kevin Smith. It was, I mean, I guess now because we're, I don't know. 20 some odd years post past when it was first released it was pretty clear it was low budget <laughs> yeah well the thing was that started out as a as a um student film oh even even that worse was, even, was worse even worse than an indie film L- lower clout than a uh a indie film it started out as a student film and became became an indie film it stepped up to that caliber everything we make we're still hoping to just be a student <laughs> film <laughs> We're working on that. But uh, Clerks is a great movie. I, I should actually rewatch that. I want to check that out on, on Netflix again sometime soon. I just, I just remember the whole hockey scene with him standing on the roof of the, uh, the convenience store that he worked at playing hockey. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. it's, uh, so memorable. So memorable. Yep. And you have a bunch of others like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. You have Heathers. You got Train Spotting, which Train Spotting, when I was in college, that was just a, a huge movie. I don't know. Somehow. Everybody caught that movie. It was Ewan McGregor stars in that film way before he was Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, great film. I know, Dan, I think you mentioned you've never seen it before. I've never seen it. Highly recommend. Definitely. Joe, have you seen it? I haven't seen it either. Oh, you I'm just, seen it? <laughs> I'm just sitting here smiling. Train Spotting is one that I know is a, is a classic, but I, I, I haven't, unfortunate, I unfortunately, haven't seen it. But, you know, uh, breaking this down, basically what I wanted to say was, you know, these things were all independent films. Uh, there is a stigma about independent films that, that independent films are um, less caliber of a film. Uh, that you look at them and you go, okay, these are not; these don't add up, and it, it's it's basically, for lack of better words, half-assed done, and um, it's not true because a lot of these things have gone mainstream, and these are all things that we um, we've taken for granted that oh, these are major release films, but they ultimately are indie films. So uh, my my. Uh, throw out there is to any of the indie filmmakers keep doing what you're doing keep uh keep pushing forward with everything that you're doing it's not impossible for you to break through in this industry and make something of yourself just look at every one of these films we just um we just listed they're all on netflix go take a look if you haven't seen them uh obviously we have some homework to go to go, to go watch train you guys need yeah. to watch train spotting I mean, come on <laughs> But um, the ultimate point is keep doing what you're doing, and we will. Uh, you'll you you could break through and make something um, special. On that note, thank you very much for listening. This is the Imperfect Podcast. See you next week.